गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स इन अवर टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट रिविजन ऑफ अवर चैप्टर दैट इज फाइबर टू फैब्रिक वी हैव ऑलरेडी डन दिस चैप्टर इन अवर प्रीवियस लेक्चर एंड यू हैव ऑलरेडी रिटर्न एक्सरसाइज क्वेश्चन इन देयर नोटबुक्स ऑल्सो ओके सो लेट स्टार्ट रिवाइज दिस चैप्टर लेट स्टार्ट रिविजन ऑफ दिस चैप्टर फाइबर टू फैब्रिक हेयर इन दिस चैप्टर यू सी टू वर्ड्स फाइबर और फैब्रिक एंड इन दिस चैप्टर वी रिवाइज सिल्क एंड वूल इन डिटेल अबाउट सिल्क एंड अबाउट वूल इन डिटेल ओके फर्स्ट दीज टू वर्ड्स फाइबर एंड फैब्रिक वट इज फाइबर दिस इज अ टाइप ऑफ मेटीरियल which is available in the form of thin and continuous strand that is called fiber see this is a material and this is in the form of thin thin material and continuous strand okay this material is used for making fabrics okay this material you say in simple words in your home you can see this and this is a thread okay a material which is used in the form of thin and continuous strand that is called fiber and there are two types of fiber one is natural fiber and other is man made fiber or you can say synthetic fiber okay you see now next word is fabric means the material that is used for clothing that is called fabric you know why we need food clothing shelter these are our basic needs but why we need all these because for protection for our protection against climate okay we need all these these are our basic needs okay and the materials that is used for clothing that is called fabric understood both the words and see you know what fabric is made of see one example take a cloth any rough cloth of piece you can take okay now put pull out the thread take a cloth and pull out a thread see pull out a single thread and twist to loosen loose this and then pull out you see it is made up of smaller thread see when we pull out the threads one by one you see this is made up of the threads or hair like threads pull out one by one these okay but don't use your only use rough material rough cloth don't use your wearing dress okay so only you you can use a single piece of your rough cloth and see one by one pull out all the threads you see this thread is hair like thread on this thread is very thin okay and this fiber so fiber is a this single hair like strand is called a fiber understood means a fiber is a hair like strand from which all these fabrics all the fabrics are made this is known as fiber understood what is the fiber or fabric so now when you uh, go for shopping any shop you see so many materials are there so many varieties in fabric some materials are good means some are cotton cloth some are silk clothes there are so many varieties and you observe at your home also when you wash any cloth material that become shrink or some fade their colors also so there are so many varieties of clothes okay now two types of clothes fibers one is natural fiber and other is man made fiber the fibers that is obtained from plants and animals that is called natural fibers 
एंड नेचुरल फाइबर्स इन्वॉल्व कॉटन जूट सिल्क एंड वूल मैन मेड फाइबर्स मीन्स दैट फाइबर्स आर सिंथेसाइज इन लेबोरेटरी मीन्स दैट आर मेड इन विद द हेल्प ऑफ केमिकल्स दोज फाइबर्स मेक विद द हेल्प ऑफ फाइबर्स और मेक इन द लेबोरेटरी दैट इज कॉल्ड मैन मेड फाइबर्स दैट फॉर एग्जाम्पल नायलॉन पोलियस्टर टैरिलोन टैरिलीन दीज आर ऑल एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ मैन मेड फाइबर ओके अंडरस्टूड सो इन नेचुरल फाइबर्स देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल फाइबर्स वन इज प्लांट फाइबर एंड सेकेंड इज एनिमल फाइबर्स मीन्स यू हैव लर्न इन योर सिक्स क्लास ऑल्सो अबाउट फाइबर कॉटन फाइबर्स ओके मीन्स कॉटन क्लॉथ कॉटन फाइबर्स आर यूज फॉर मेकिंग कॉटन फैब्रिक और कॉटन क्लॉथ्स कॉटन एंड जूट ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम प्लांट दीज आर प्लांट फाइबर्स दीज आर कॉल्ड प्लांट फाइबर्स एंड सिल्क एंड वूल टू इम्पोर्टेंट एनिमल फाइबर्स वूल कम फ्रॉम एनिमल्स सच एज शीप गॉट या एंड अदर एग एनिमल्स ऑल्सो एंड सिल्क आर ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम सिल्क वॉम एंड वूल इज यूज फॉर नीटिंग एंड नीटिंग द क्लोथ एंड सिल्क इज यूज फॉर मेकिंग सारीज और अदर ड्रेस मेटीरियल्स ओके सो नेचुरल फाइबर इन्वॉल्व प्लांट फाइबर्स एंड एज वेल एज एनिमल फाइबर्स सी नेचुरल फाइबर्स एग्जाम्पल्स को जूट कॉटन मैडमेन फाइबर्स आर दोज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम केमिकल सब्सटांसिस दैट इज नायलॉन रैन पोलियस्टर ओके सी इन दिस चैप्टर विल डिस्कस अबाउट एनिमल फाइबर्स मीन्स कॉमन एनिमल फाइबर्स दैट आर वी गेट फ्रॉम एनिमल्स दैट फाइबर्स आर वूल एंड कॉटन वूल एंड सिल्क वूल इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम शीप गॉट या कैमल ओके एंड सिल्क इज ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम सिल्क वोम एंड दीज एनिमल्स हैव अ थिक कॉट ऑफ हेयर सी दीज एनिमल्स शीप एंड गॉट दीज एनिमल्स हैव अ थिक कॉट ऑफ हेयर ऑन देयर बॉडी टू कीप दैम वाम ड्यूरिंग कोल्ड विंटर सीजन ओके द हेयर ट्रैप अ लॉट ऑफ एयर ओके द एयर ट्रैप लॉट ऑफ एयर एंड दीज एनिमल्स मीन्स दीज एयर ट्रैप्ड इन द हेयर ऑफ दीज एनिमल्स एंड प्रिवेंट्स देयर बॉडी हीट फ्रॉम बींग लॉस्ट ऑफ कोल्ड सराउंडिंग मीन्स फ्रॉम द कोल्ड कोल्ड इन द सराउंडिंग देर इज सो मच कोल्ड सो दीज हेयर्स कीप देयर बॉडी वाम ओके ड्यूरिंग विंटर सीजन मीन्स दीज हेयर प्रोटेक्ट्स द इनर बॉडी ऑफ द शीप गोट एनी एनिमल्स ओके एंड वूल इज मोस्ट कॉमनली ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम शीप ओके दीज आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स नाउ नेक्स्ट विल स्टार्ट डिस्कस अबाउट वूल ओके नाउ so next is about wool wool is the most commonly used animal fiber okay wool is the soft wavy and hair wavy or curly hair which covers the body of sheep means wool thread is like a this type of thread this is a wool and this is very soft okay this is very soft this wool is obtained from sheep when we uh, cut the hairs of sheep then in laboratory this form like this type of wool used in making sweaters at home okay and actually uh, wool is come from some animals like sheep ya camel or goat these are because these animals have a thick coat on coat of hair on their body okay to keep them warm during cold winter season wool is obtained from wool how wool is obtained 
वुल इज ऑबटेन्ड फ्रॉम द हेयर्स और यू कैन से फ्लीस एफ एल डबल ई सी ई फ्लीस ऑफ शीप गॉट कैमल रेबिट एंड अदर एनिमल्स दिस एनिमल्स हैव अ थिक कोट ऑफ हेयर ऑन देयर बॉडी बिकॉज हेयर ट्रैप्स एयर एंड एयर इज अ पोअर कंडक्टर ऑफ हीट एंड दिस थिक लेयर ऑफ हेयर कीप देयर बॉडी वार्म एंड प्रोटेक्ट फ्रॉम द हर्श कोल्ड और ऑप्टेनिंग वूल एनिमल्स आर रियर्ड एंड देन हेयर इज कट एंड प्रोसेस्ड इन टू वूल मीन्स वूल इज कॉमनली ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम शीप एंड देन शीप आर रियर्ड इन मैनी पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया फॉर गेटिंग वूल द नेम ऑफ सम ऑफ द ब्रीड्स ऑफ शीप रियर्ड इन अवर कंट्री आर ऑप्टेनिंग वूल एंड द क्वालिटी ऑफ वी वूल इज ऑप्टेन एंड द नेम ऑफ स्टेट्स लाइक राजस्थान इन राजस्थान एंड पंजाब गुड क्वालिटी ऑफ वूल एंड नेम ऑफ द ब्रीड ऑफ दैट शीप इज लोही एल ओ एच आई सो देर आर मैन अदर इन अदर स्टेट इन डिफरेंट स्टेट्स वी फाउंड डिफरेंट नेम ऑफ ब्रीड ऑफ शीप एंड क्वालिटी ऑफ वूल आर देयर इन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर विच टाइप ऑफ वूल फॉर वुलन शोल्स फेमस फॉर वुलन शोल्स आर देयर एंड होजरी फॉर होजरी गुजरात इज फेमस ओके वेर मीन्स गुजरात इन गुजरात स्टेट होजरी वूल इज फाउंड ओके होजरी क्लोथ्स आर फेमस so this process of uh, wool obtaining wool we discuss one by one the process how we can obtain okay see fleece or wool bearing animals means fleece or wool bearing animals like you have learned about goat camel about goat camel yak these are coarse hairs and fine soft under hairs and soft under hair of animal like sheep goat hairs are called fleece okay now for obtaining wool sheep are reared then hair is cut and processed into wool okay for obtaining wool how we obtain wool from animals for obtaining wool first sheep are reared then their hairs is cut and then processed into wool then we obtain this type of we get this type of wool okay first one is processing first one is rearing and breeding of sheep sheep are reared in many parts of our country like jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh uttaranchal sikkim haryana punjab gujarat okay sheep feed on grass on ant leaves and uh, they are also feed with some other sources of pulses corn jowar oil cakes and minerals and in winter in winter season sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves and other things like corn pulses jowar okay and then breeds of sheep have thick hair on their body we know and good quality of wool in large quantities and in summer season that hairs uh, cut the hairs on the of sheep because in winter these hairs protect the sheep and keep warm their body from cold but in summer these hairs we can cut okay and how the processing of wool means processing how we can change the hairs fleece into wool involving six steps there we have six steps first one is shearing second is scouring next one is sorting next one is burs separation or you can say combining okay next is dyeing and next is spinning first one is shearing second is scouring third is sorting burs separation next one is dyeing then spinning means how we can get wool 
for our for making a, a sweater clothes during these processes when how we can change hair into wool hair of sheep into wool we cut that hair in summer season because in summer they don't need means they protect their inner body is uh, warm in uh, during summer season their body become warm and they don't need these hairs these hairs protect them in winter season so in winter we can't we don't cut these their hairs okay we cut on hairs of sheep only in winter season now see what is shearing the processes are the process of processing of fiber into wool is run in six steps the hair of sheep is removed from the body along with the thin layer of skin by using machine means when when we cut hairs of sheep then by with the help of machines this process is called shearing okay understood next one is scouring means the sheared skin with hair is washed in tanks then that hair of sheep are washed in tanks to remove dust and dirt this process is called scouring means scour in scouring process what's the scouring process means to remove dust and dirt from hairs of sheep that process is called scouring next one is sorting means now the hairy skin is sent to the factories okay this hairy skin is sent to the factories where hairs of different textures are separated okay means when hairs are separated different te textures this process is called sorting in factories this process is done okay now the small fluffy fibers called burs and are separated from the hairs and again washed and dry okay now then uh, after that the fibers are then dyed in different colors so we get different type of different colors of wool this is red yellow other are black green different type these are all done by with the help of dyed process dyeing process okay now this the fibers are then straightened combined combed and rolled into yarn okay they are then spun and woven into fabric these are processing of fibers these these processes are done to making fiber into wool understood first one is shearing scouring sorting then burs combining then dyeing after that what's the process last one is spinning in spinning spinning process the fiber is are then straight combed and rolled into yarn okay they are then spun spun and woven into fabric these are six processes for making converting hair to wool understood now uses of wool means wool is used for making warm clothes such as sweater cap shawl gloves blankets and wool is also used for making carpets also okay these are all about wool next one is about silk okay silk is a fiber that is obtained from cocoons of silk worm or you can say silk moth and the silk moth lives on the lives on the leaves of mulberry plant okay this silk moth lives on the leaves of mulberry plant these are present on mulberry plants 
and were different types of silk form produced different type of silk in term of luster texture okay you uh, you have seen, uh, you have heard about tussar silk muga silk these are different types of silk okay and different type of silk are different types uh, of produced by different type of silk moth mulberry silk is the most common silk moth okay and uh, what is sericulture sericulture means she, uh, rearing of silk worms rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk that is called sericulture means when we start rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk this process is called sericulture understood now history of silk what's the history of silk means silk was discovered in china around 3500 bc silk became a prized possession because of its fine quality and luster originally it was used by emperors only okay and silk is uh, produced in india also because silk use of silk during the indus valley civilization has also been found means this is all the history of silk where it is found where it uh, where it developed okay now life cycle of silk worm see there are four stages in the life cycle of silk moth that is first one is eggs second larva then pupa then adult four stages first this uh, life cycle of life uh, is very interesting because silk moth is not formed as such the eggs directly okay first one is the female silk moth lays eggs on the leaves of mulberry plant mulberry tree okay lays eggs then after about 14 days eggs are hatch into larva called caterpillars then grows into pupa then adult silk moth convert into adult silk moth see life cycle first see you see female silk moth with eggs is female silk moth lays eggs on the leaves of the tree such as mulberry tree okay then you see in this uh, figure also then on the leaves of mulberry you see eggs then after some days eggs converted into caterpillar or larva then after that converts into pupa means this uh, when silk worm is ready to enter the next stage and that a uh, uh, next stage of this development is called pupa okay means then it swings its head on the side of side and then developing a silk moth after that okay when pupa develops fully when pupa develops fully to form the adult silk moth then the cocoon split up and a beautiful silk moth comes out you see in this figure the adult silk female silk moth then after lay eggs then convert into larva after that convert into pupa then con developing moth and then adult silk moth beautiful adult silk moth this in this is the life cycle of silk moth how this is con how this convert into an adult silk moth okay now next is production of silk means processing of silk means processing of silk is obtained from by different methods first one is rearing of silk worms means to obtain cocoons rearing of silk moth is done after that reeling after that dyeing then this is followed by spinning and weaving okay so first one is 
rearing of silk worm means a female silk worm lays hundred of eggs at a time okay see hundred of eggs at a time then the eggs then the eggs of silk moth are stored carefully on the paper strip okay on a cloth strip or paper strip and sold to silk worm farmers then farmer keeps the that eggs at suitable temperature or humidity under hygienic conditions then the uh, the eggs are then under suitable uh, temperature when eggs hatch then silk worm uh, uh, silk worm has the eggs on the mulberry tree after that convert into cocoons then adult silk moth okay so in this the female silk moth lays eggs eggs are then stored over a clean cloth or paper strip you can see in this also the legs are warmed to a suitable tem suitable temperature the eggs hatch into larva called caterpillar or silk worm and the silk worms are kept in bamboo trays and feed on mulberry leaves and grows in size after 30 to 40 days the silk worm stop eating and begin to spin cocoons then cocoons get harden because of exposure to air inside the cocoons the silk worm develops into silk moth okay this is the rearing process of silk worms this is the uh, uh, two uh, male and female silk moths okay you see the difference female and male silk moth rearing of silk moth like this processing now reeling of silk in this cocoons are collected and kept in sunlight in the process of reeling the cocoons are collected and kept in sunlight or boiled or exposed to steam and the silk fibers are separated out the process of taking out the silk thread from the cocoons is called reeling reeling is done by machines okay the process of taking out silk thread from cocoons from cocoons is called reeling okay understood reeling is done by reeling process reeling of silk is done by machines understood this uh, reeling of silk see these examples machines by done by machines okay now dyeing in this the silk fiber are then dyed into different colors like wool okay and next one is spinning and weaving in spinning and weaving the silk fibers are then spun into threads and woven into different type of silk cloth that is fiber okay these are the process through which we product produce silk this spinning and weaving of silk like these machines you see the materials of sarees these are silk material okay these are done by machines with the help of machines these are done now uses of silk silk is used in making used in making kurtas shawl other sarees other clothes and the countries which produce silk on a large scale are china and india okay understood these are about silk now now about natural silk and artificial silk natural silk is obtained from cocoons of silk worms and it is made up of made of a protein okay natural silk is an animal fiber and artificial silk that is called rayon is obtained from wood pulp and it is made of modified plant material called cellulose and paper is also made of 
cellulose obtained from wood pulp we can distinguish between natural silk means pure silk or artificial silk by performing a burning test see this activity take a piece of natural silk fiber and another piece of artificial silk fiber burn them separately and both of them produced smell okay and the fabric which burns giving smell burning hair hair like the fabric which burns giving a smell of burning hair will be natural silk and the fabric which burns giving a smell of burning paper will be the artificial silk just like silk wool is also made of proteins so take a piece of wool also burns giving them a smell of burning hair okay now discovery of silk discovery of silk means according to the old chinese legend the empress si long chai was asked by the emperor hong ti find the cause of damage means cause the damaged leaves of mulberry trees growing in their garden the emperor found white worms eating up mulberry leaves white worms eating up mulberry leaves she also noticed that they were spinning shiny cocoons around them accidentally a cocoon his dropped into the cup of tea and a tangle of delicate threads separated from them from the cocoon so silk industry began in china and was kept a closely guarded secret of 400 of years later on traders and travelers introduced silk of other silk to other countries and the route they traveled is still called the silk route understood this is all about silk and see mulberry tree this is mulberry tree leaves of mulberry tree mulberry tree is look like this type of tree okay thank you have a nice day and uh, one thing now you have to write extra questions of lesson number 3 okay and uh, one question arise in your mind how where we write these questions in your notebook after your lesson number any lesson if you have written lesson number 5 exercise question then after that you can write extra questions of lesson number 3 only write lesson name number and write extra questions of heading in heading write extra questions of lesson number 3 then start write anywhere in your science notebook you can write okay thank you